So the Ironman 70.3 World Championship is in the books. Um, I'm super excited for this race because of a number of reasons. I love St. George. I love the course. Um, I love the weather this time of year here. And uh, I was feeling really good leading into the race. I had a great training walk because I had six weeks after Dallas to take a little bit of recovery and then have a really solid four weeks of training, which went really, really well. I was able to get really good numbers, especially on the bike. Um, so I was having a lot of confidence that I was going to be able to ride with the, with the best guys in this race. Uh, I was also able to get some training with some friends. Garrick came up for a couple of days. We did some hard training, nice, nice running in the fall. The conditions back home were great for preparing because it was pretty similar weather to what we were going to see race day. And, uh, I just had a lot of confidence before heading to St. George. Um, did get another week of altitude in right before the race with Nick up in Brian Head, which was awesome. Just get that quick altitude boost. Um, got some snow. It was it was a pretty fun lead in, but ultimately I was just feeling really relaxed and you know confident heading into the race. A um, couple a few days before the race, I did actually start to kind of get a sore throat, and I was worried I was getting sick. And then I thought maybe it was just allergies because it kind of turned into just like a nose like kind of sinuses, um, congestion. And it was worrying me, honestly, race morning, we kind of got to the, got to the, you know, race site getting ready. And I was just like trying to convince myself that I could still perform well, even though I was feeling like not the best. Um, but I had been feeling fine in my training. So I thought, you know, probably I'm going to be able to perform well. And, and I just had to like really focus on getting myself into the zone. So, um, unfortunately I just kind of like, wasn't really, really focused, uh, right before the race on having like a super strong start and it was a, a really tight, uh, start shoot. So I just wasn't fast enough off the line and, um, unfortunately kind of got boxed out, s smacked around a little bit and ended up kind of having a terrible start which put me on the back foot right from the beginning. Um, but I did sort of find some feet, eventually got, you know, I wasn't having an absolutely horrible swim after the start, and I got out about two minutes down. Unfortunately, I was in about 34th place, um, which is pretty bad. Obviously, I'm quite capable of swimming better than that. There was only like less than 10 guys behind me. Um, but I got on the bike. Well, actually, I was gonna put gloves on and then I was just in such a hurry to get back onto the bike that I decided not to. Um, and it was quite cold. It was like probably seven or eight degrees Celsius, but I could tell pretty quickly that I wasn't going to freeze cause I was riding and my hands were cold, but I was still feeling okay. Um, saw Matt Hansen kind of bridged up to him. And then once I caught him, we were going up the first climb and I saw a big group ahead. Uh, obviously the main contenders were way up the road, but I just thought, all right, let's try to catch this group. Um, which I was able to do and then sort of just started riding my way through that group um, towards the front at around the 30k mark is when Sam Long caught caught the front of that group and um, there was a bunch of speculation that I caused his penalty when I passed him that's not actually what happened he actually got the penalty prior to that it just took the referees a minute or two to get to him because there's a bunch of media motos in the way and they weren't able to show him the card right away so um, that was unfortunate for him. I mean, I didn't see, I didn't see anything that warranted a penalty, but I wasn't watching him the whole time. So obviously I don't really know. Um, but it sucks when somebody's bridging up and they're the one, you know, making their way through the field and they're the one who gets a penalty. It seems pretty unfair, but, um, so he pulled off into the penalty tent and then it was mostly Thor Bendix Madsen, I believe is his name from, um, Denmark, super strong, rider really young guy and he was at the front a lot i went to the front quite a bit between like 50k onwards 45k onwards and you know i was feeling super strong like i had really high average power i even on the flat part before snow canyon i was holding like 330 320 which for me on a flat section is pretty darn good um and then going into the climb i was leading coming into snow canyon and then thor passed me at the bottom and just really started pushing the pace. So I was like, all right, I'm going to go with him, see if we can kind of break this group up. And, uh, there's probably like six or eight guys in our group. And I think we dropped a couple guys, but I eventually had to let Thor go cause he was really hauling. And I knew that it was going to be too much for me to, to stay with him. 
So I dialed it back from like what was having to be like 380 down to like 350 um, and let him go. He ended up having the fastest time up Snow Canyon of anybody, like faster than the front group even. So he was obviously going for it. Um, and then I could see actually Gustav Eden ahead coming back to me. Obviously he wasn't feeling super strong at that point. So I did catch him on the descent into, um, back into town for T2. And I just stayed behind him because he was moving pretty well on the downhill. And if I had have pushed it to go by him, I might've gone 10 seconds faster, but I thought maybe worth it to get a little bit of a rest. The rest of the group kind of just stayed behind me. Um, they did, I did have a bit of a gap to them, but they bridged up to me and I wasn't too, too worried about that. Um, but getting off the bike, I actually felt really good. I had a good transition, partly because I had no warm gear on, so uh, didn't have to take gloves off or anything, and got out just behind Gustav. I think I was in ninth place, um, and quickly passed him. He was having a terrible day, whatever it was, whether it was Kona fatigue or I think somebody mentioned that he had allergies or something. Um, so he kind of went backwards, and then I focused on catching Thor, caught him probably like just at the top of um, the climb on diagonal, kind of rolled past him and, you know, um, tried to put a little bit of surge in just to kind of break him a bit, which I was able to do. And then through the golf course section, there's a couple of turnarounds and I could see that Aaron Royal and Clay Mignon were both gaining on me. Um, so I thought, okay, these guys are probably going to catch me, um, see if I can work with them. And when they did catch, it was actually just Aaron Royal, um, just at the top of the climb before coming down diagonal the first time. He had dropped Clay Mignon at that point. And so I thought, and so Aaron said something like, let's just take, you know, let's, let's take turns a couple of minutes each because there was guys ahead that we possibly could catch. So so that's what we did. Two, two or three minutes each, we'd run in the lead. The other guy would kind of sit on the shoulder just behind and we were moving really well. Um, at first, it was actually pretty hard for me to keep up with him, and I thought I probably won't be able to stay at this pace the whole time, but I can do this for a while and see how it goes. Um, so we ran like that for probably the whole descent, the whole flat part at the bottom, and then coming, starting to come back up the hill the second time on the second lap, I noticed that he was just not taking his turn. He wasn't passing me, and he started to sound a little bit more labored, so I just picked up the pace a tiny bit. Uh, and I was able to kind of break him there a little bit. He just started going backwards and I just kept pushing and then I started getting splits. So now I'm in seventh and I started getting splits to Mickey Taggolt and Fred Funk who were pretty close in fifth, sixth. And they were like less than two minutes ahead and I just pushed as hard as I could on that, you know, that middle section of the second lap and got it down to about a minute um, with a couple K to go, but I just wasn't able to close anymore and those guys were battling each other and pushing hard and, and they finished strong so came in in seventh um ultimately i was really happy with the day obviously you know before the race knowing how i felt and i thought if i'm a bit sick like sometimes that takes a lot of energy out of you fortunately it didn't seem to and after that terrible swim start um you know 34th out of the water and then make my way into seventh is obviously super um positive overall definitely frustrated with the swim start I just need to be better like I, I need to focus on that in my training I need to just really increase my odds of having a good swim because my good swims are good enough to put me in contention honestly for a podium or a win in a race like this and I just need to more consistently have those good swims I can't be having a good swim only half the time or less it has to be you know 80 percent of the time um, in order to be competitive consistently so that's really my goal for next year's Worlds, but super happy, you know, with how, uh, with how this one played out in the end after what could have been a bad day. Nick was having a struggle of a day with, you know, having breathing problems, and um, it was great to see Tamara have a good day the day before. Leslie didn't have a good day, so that's part of being on the team. It's, um, you know, you you lift each other up when, when somebody has a bad day, and, and it's great to see your teammates have a good one, so... And I've been the one having a bad day lately, so it felt good to kind of have that good result. Um, and obviously, I was stoked to see Ben competing up there, almost beating Christian. But uh, anyway, it's just a really, really positive day overall. And next is the 70.3 in Los Cabos. So trying to recover this week, get ready for the heat, and uh, have a good day there. So thanks for following along. Like and subscribe. And uh, 
catch you at the next one.